Matthew 24 and verses number 1. My brother John was making an announcement. I heard him said, we should be prepared. That the end is coming. We should be prepared. Amen. Then in the office, I told the man who I said, why is brother John saying what I want to preach? Amen. I said, why is he preaching what I want to preach? The man was laughing. This is to tell you, anytime you are in the spirit, you are connected, and there must be a testimony from another person. There must be a confirmation. Hallelujah. Matthew 24 and verses number 1, I read in Jesus' name. And when Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came unto him for to show him the beauties of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not left, there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall this things be? And what shall be the sign of their coming? And of the end of the world. When Jesus and Jesus answered them and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Verses 5. Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places. All these things are the beginning of sorrow. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. I want to deal on the message which I title The Day of the Lord. Or the Terrible Day of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Day of the Lord to us will be a day of joy. Will be a day of gladness. A day of rejoicing. Amen. Will be a day of celebration. But to some, will be a day of national teeth. A day of sorrow. A day of weeping. A day of crying out loud from the, your most inner man with pains, with tears. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Jesus told his disciples when they asked him, when shall your kingdom come? And what will be the sign of your coming? The first what Jesus said in verses 4. He said, take heed that you not be deceived. Take heed that you not be talked out of what you know. You know why? The spirit of end time is a spirit of antichrist. It is a spirit of deception that is moving around all over the world. Today, we see what is going on. Even on social media. We see how many people have been led, led astray. How many marriages have been destroyed. How many things are going on in the world. Jesus warned you and I not to be deceived. You know why? Everyone who stands by the truth, the devil will come to shake you even by the truth. 
Jesus said, you shall know this truth and this truth shall save you. But if you truth you say you know, you don't take it to heart. Something is going to happen. Amen. In Genesis chapter 2, when God was created the world, he told Adam Eve, you can eat of whatever thing in the garden, but there is a tree you shall not eat of. There were two trees in the garden. The tree of life and the tree of good and evil. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. God said, you shall not eat of it. In chapter 3, it just says chapter. The devil come and says, did God say that you should not eat? Amen. The devil will not come with another gospel. The devil will not come with any other thing. But we will come with the things you think you know and remove you. Because why? You think you are saved when you deceive yourself to others. Amen. You shall be tested. But Jesus said, be careful that no man deceive you. Be careful that no man deceive you. Why? Because you are still standing. The devil is going to do anything to make you fall. He's going to make people lie against you. He's going to make people hate you. He's going to make people speak evil against you. But only those that hold up to the hand shall receive the crown of life. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus, the first response he gave to his disciples, he asked, when will your kingdom come? And what shall be the sign of your coming? He said, the number one thing you'll be worried of is that you'll be rooted that no man deceive you. If you think you are rooted when you know damn deep in your heart you are not of God, the wind will blow. And when it blows, you will be swept along with it. The devil will try you. God will allow the devil to try every believer that says they are of him. Do you know what happened in the garden? Heaven was not supposed to be a place for believers. And hell was not supposed to be a place for the believers as well. God didn't create heaven for people to go. And he didn't create hell for people to go. When you say, ah, it happened to me when I was meditating. In Genesis, God created the heaven and the earth. Heaven was his throne. The earth, he created it and he said, a person like me will live on this earth and I will come to him. We will fellowship together. Amen. Amen. God always come to garden. But when devil came in and spoke to the woman and deceived man, man fell. God regretted. It's somebody who he created in his image. Best to do is to be like me that whenever I want to discuss, I will come to him. Adam, how did you see this issue? How did you see life? What do you think we should call this situation? What do you think we should do about it? But man fell. God asked to separate from man. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, God regretted, God repented that he had made man. When God was creating everything, I told us last week, he told the sea, bring fish. The sea gave fish. The land gave plants and gave fruits. It provided. But when God wanted to create human, he could find nothing to create human. God turned to himself and said, let us create man after like me, in my own image. Amen. Amen. Every day, God will always come to the garden and fellowship with Adam. But when man fell, God began to look for man. God began to search and says, Adam, Adam, where are you? Adam says, 
Lord, I hide myself because I am naked. And God said, what? Who told you you were naked? Hmm. Who told you you were naked? And God asked him, have you eaten from the fruit I commanded not to eat? And Adam says, it is the woman you give to me. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. If you stand by your ground, no man can deceive you. Except you want to be deceived. When the woman came, eat. It was a desire of the man to eat. When the devil came to the woman, eat. It was desirous, according to the Bible. The Bible says, the fruit was pleasant and desirous to be eaten. And the woman desired to eat. It is your desire that puts you to temptation. Right on, sir. Everyone daily attempted your, your, how do I put it? Your concept to that temptation, what is what makes you fall? If you don't desire it, if it comes, it will be like plate, will go away. Yes, sir. But if you desire it, no matter, you try to pretend, no, no, I don't want. But that deep in your heart, your heart is saying, bring it. Your body is saying, no. Your heart is saying, bring it. Your body is saying, no. That is why you fall when people are not there. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus says, let no man deceive you. Let's take a look at how the devil deceived it. Today, humanity is suffering from that same deception. Why? The woman desire to hear. Amen. Amen. How did the devil come? The devil did not come with another gospel. He said, did God said, and truly God said, by the time you give it to the devil to rephrase every word God gives to you, you are being deceived. Many of us, we want to hear sweet words. We don't want to hear the truth. The truth as it injures you, it is removing the gall of bitterness. Yes, sir. It is removing that thing that makes you become human. Amen. Amen. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus says, take heed that no man deceive you. He said, for many shall come in my name. Today, I will not see them. There are many videos I've watched over the internet. I see people claiming to be Jesus. Yes, sir. Have you not seen them? Yes, sir. So we say, I am Jesus. Jesus this, Jesus that. That's to tell you, this is the spirit of end time. And they have congregation. There was a church in South America, or even in America, the right, I don't know. The pastor obliged all the men to mark tattoo 666 on the whole congregation. Everyone and they will they began to worship this man as their Messiah. It's on the internet, go and look for it. Amen. Amen. They are so proud with the tattoo 666 in their hand, in their left hand, in their right hand, all over their body. They are so proud and they are calling their pastor their God. People have been deceived. Jesus says, this is only the beginning of sorrow. The end is by the corner. The end has not come yet. It is going to be so tough that even the believers will say, I give up. That is when the end will come. It is going to be so tough that those who are pretending in the kingdom of God, in the church of God, saying, I am serving God, the trial will so come upon you and say, no, I don't have, I cannot go there. Jesus says, be careful. This kingdom of God is not for everyone. It is for those who are ready to suffer for it. It is not for the lazy believers. It is not for the believers who don't want to be offended. Ah, pastor, talk about me. Members are looking at me with bad eyes. The ushers, they are, they are trying to do this, do that. I will not go to church. You were never meant for the kingdom. Sir, tell us, you sir. are only coming to show up in the church and not preparing for the kingdom. Every time we come to the house of God, the word of God washes us. We get offended, but yet we remove those things by the word of God. Anyone that cannot be corrected in the house of God cannot be corrected anywhere. Today, church is sick because of prosperity message. No one wants to tell the members truth because they need a tithe. They need the offerings. They need a bigger church. It is better I just 
have 12 members going to heaven with me that to have congregation of sinners and not make heaven. Are you following me? Yes, sir. Moses, as a son man of God, who God appeared to face to face, who God spoke to, no man in the Bible has ever seen God above Moses. But listen, Moses listened to the people where God says, speak to the rock and the water will come out. Moses gave heed to the people he was leading and struck the rock out of tension, out of pressure of the people. And he sinned against God. He saw the promised land yet did not enter. The people who pushed him to do it entered. But him as a pastor did not enter. Church of God, we are very close to the end time. Very, very close. It could be the next second. It could be the next minute. Let us stop living a life of pretense and serve God in whatever estates, in whatever situation, whether you have to eat or not. I told us last week that God is aware. We should move on. God is not deaf. He's not blinded by your situation. At all. If God allowed Job to go through the suffering and at the end, the Bible says we should learn from the patience of Job. The Bible says we should learn from the patience of Job. Then we should, there are things we must learn in our life. By the time we go through some situations, it is meant for us to learn from it. Are you following me? Yes, sir. The Bible says, we shall hear of wars and rumors of war. What are we hearing today? Is the church with me? Yes, sir. What are we hearing today? Wars, sir. Everywhere. Wars and rumors of war everywhere. We hear Russia against Ukraine. Russia trying to go even against Poland. China is not even trying to go against other countries. You see, nations are against nations. Kingdoms are against kingdoms. Don't be surprised. Even Sudan. Yes, this is truth. Amen. Amen. This is what is going on. This fulfilling what was written over 2,000 years ago. It wasn't written 100 years ago that they would say they got insight into the future. It was written more than 2,000 years. And today, it's been fulfilled. Why don't you fear for your life? There are people who are just meant to reach the gate of the kingdom and return back. Because why? They were never meant for the kingdom. All through their life, they were serving God in pretense. Amen. Amen. Let me read on. In verse 7, the Bible says, Nation shall rise up against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be farmers and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Are we hearing of famine? Yes, sir. Hunger. Are we not hearing of starvation everywhere? Yes, sir. People are hungry. Pestilences. We hear different news. Open your television. You never hear good news for one hour. For one hour, take your remote and sit close to your telly. You will never hear good news. One time I was preaching. I said, those days, the works of darkness was established in darkness. It was only seen in darkness. But today, the devil is proud to show off his work in the daytime. Those days, women will be ashamed to up, open and expose themselves. But today, they take joy in it. Do you think it's their eyes? No, it is a demon that is in them yes, speaking in them. They don't know. Tell us, sir. It is a demon in them. Amen. Amen. The Bible says the word of God is sharper than any two edged sword. As I'm talking to you, I'm talking to myself. As I'm preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself. I didn't come to preach to them. I come to preach to myself. Hmm. Tell us, sir. Amen. Amen. As I am preaching now, I am also washing myself so that I don't fall. Yes, sir. I am a man of God. I receive temptation day and night. Mm, tell us, sir. Amen. Amen. I receive temptation day and night. Mm. So if any person is not watchful, sorry, you may be carried away. The day, the terrible day of the Lord. The believers, do you know what? In Genesis chapter 3, where we read, we are referred to, the Bible says, Adam hid himself. Why did he hide himself? Because he was not ready for the Lord's visitation. He was never expecting God to come at that time. He was playing 
He forgot that he was supposed to do the work. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But when the Lord came, the Bible says, he went and hide himself. There are many people on that beautiful day that the Lord shall appear. They will say, oh Lord, why now? You should have given me one more minute to confess my sins. One more minute to have repent. To change my way. To forgive others. Some will regret. To us, it would be a day of joy because we have been suffering in this body. We want to be liberated. We have stayed too long on this earth that we can no longer bear it anymore. We want to go to a home. A home that is not made by hand. A place where God has set for us. But the day of the law will come as a thief in the night. In that moment when you are not ready. In that moment when you think you have waited too long. In that moment when you are giving up. The Bible says, the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night. In that hour when you are tired. You think you have given up all. You think you have done it all. When you are saying, God, I have long waited. I cannot longer anymore. The Bible says, it will come as a thief in the night. In which the heaven will disappear with a great noise. You will look up the heaven and the sky is no more. The heaven is no more. An element shall melt. Remember Jesus says in Matthew 24, 1. He says, not verses 2, not one stone will be left upon another. Not one stone. We see those stars in heaven. They are small. You can even do your hand like this. It will cover the star. The Bible says, when the heavens disappear, they will fall down. And everywhere will be so bad. Destructive. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are there in, shall be burnt up. Everything you think uh, you are investing your life on. When you are supposed to be investing your life in the kingdom, you are building, building houses and doing it. A day with hope, those things you will see them before your eyes. Melt. Mm. Destroyed. All your labor is in vain. Where you put your hope? Where will you run to? What will you do at that time? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Seeing then in verse 11 that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? What kind of person you should be thinking of becoming now? What kind of person do you want to be? On that day, if these things begin to happen, do you want to be here or you already been caught up before it happens? Amen. Amen. It will be a day of sorrow to many who have not known God. They will cry. I read in the place that some will even try to take their life. They will kill themselves. They will not see death. The enemy will come. Take this mark or you die of starvation. Even in the time of COVID-19, we saw some few dramas that played. How they are trying to move. Go to my, my Facebook page. You will see. Even in Benjamin, there were some people who were inserted cheap. With this cheap, you don't need to carry your documents. You don't need to carry your bank account, anything. You only get to wherever you want to pay. Put your hand, you pay. Anywhere you go in the airport, you are just free. Only show them your shoe. What does that stand for? What does that stand for? That's the mark of the beast. Yes, sir. The Bible says a time will come you can no longer buy or sell. The devil is going to fast forward everything soon. That it will be so difficult for everyone. Listen, if these people give you a bank command and they are encouraging you to put your money in account, don't you think they have a plan? The day they seize your network, your bank account does not go, how will you not sustain? Have you ever thought of this? How will you not live? How will you not fly if you don't even have one arrow in your hand? Your account has been seized. The bank system has been destroyed and it has been taken over by some strong persons. What will you not do? Amen. Somebody say, thank God I'm African. Say that word. There is a grace over there. Before it comes there, at least the trumpet might have sound. Hallelujah. Before all these things begin to happen there, God knows why it makes us to be like that. Before it happened there, we already, some of us, we already hold. Let's take our Bible quickly. The Bible says, the great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hastily, greatly. It's fast forwarding very fast, the Bible says. Even the voice of the day of the Lord. 
The mighty man shall cry. Hey, the man who has strength. The man who had confidence in himself. The man who thought he was serving God. The Bible says, he shall cry. Why will he cry? He will be left in pain. He will be in sorrow. When he cries, the heaven has shot. No one to hear. Everywhere is destructive. A day of sorrow. A day of gloominess. A day of pain. A day of agony. Not to those who trust God. But to those who don't have God. But to every one of us who have God, we shall be rejoicing on that day. Because we have stayed too long here in this body that we are tired. Amen. But there are those who shall cry on that day. The mighty men shall cry. There are those who have built confidences in themselves, in the things they have, in the things they possess. The Bible says it's going to be a day of sorrow, a day of gloominess. A dark day to those ones. I urge you, brothers and sisters, if you have not known Jesus Christ as Lord, as your personal savior, this is an opportunity to say, Lord, I am sorry I have been serving you wrongly. I am sorry I have been pretending I want to know you more. I want to follow you in the right way. I am tired of pretending. The Bible says, a day of trouble and distress. You will be distressed. Trouble everywhere. You will be crying. No help. Why are you crying? No reason. What is happening to you? You don't know. You are just distressed. Why? The heaven has been locked. The grace has been removed. No matter how you cry, the Bible says, the mighty man will cry. No matter how you cry, your prayers cannot be heard. Because why? The time of grace has expired. The time of your repentance has expired. A man's life is like a candle. It has a beginning. It has an end. The moment a candle finishes burning, it is over. But miraculously, automatically, there can no longer be any candle that will sprung up. It is only why you have the light that you must make use of it. It is only why you have the light that is still burning. Call upon the great light to shine. But to every one of us, the Bible says in 1 John 3, that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. That when Jesus comes, we shall have rejoicing. Why? We have not labored in vain. We shall not be like Adam who went to hide himself because of sin. The sin you are enjoying today, tomorrow will hide you. Repent. Say repent. The sin you are enjoying now will fight against you. You may be doing it, no one is seeing it. But there is a high you cannot close. The man of God is not here. My church members are not here. Let me do it. Let me say it. Tell them I did not tell you. In fact, I did not even see you. A day will come, you will give account. God did not create the air fire for any believers. It is humans that are walking their way to hell. The air fire was made for the devil. The earth was supposed to be for man. Since the day man fell, the devil was cast down from heaven to earth. God has a new plan of taking his own children to heaven. We no longer can stay here. Why? The devil has dominated the head. He's doing everything, inventing everything fastly, the Bible says, so that it will deceive everyone. God didn't create air fire for you. He didn't create it for me. But your decision is what is drawing you to hell now. Your lack, your lust, your desire is drawing you to hell now. Why don't you renounce those things? They may hate you. You may not have friends. They may dislike you. Are you the only one going to church? Are you the only one that thinks you know it all? Men will hate you. Jesus says they will hate you because they hated me. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't expect to have friends in this world. The Bible says friendship with this world is enmity with God. If you think you have friends of this world, know it that you are an enemy of God. You cannot be of the world and of God at the same time. Impossible, Even though we are in this world, we don't belong here, the Bible says. We have a place where we are going. 
We should not live like people who don't have a place. God created us from himself. He positioned us where he will fellowship with us. But since the devil spoiled that place, God is now wanting to take us back. The only way he can receive us back was to release his soul self in Jesus and come again to receive us. Let me just round up with this one. First Corinthians 6. Repent. 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 For the day of the Lord is at hand. The Bible says, Know ye not that the unrighteous man who is an unrighteous man? The man that knows what is right thing to do, yet refuses to do it. A sinner. The Bible says, Know ye not, in verses 9, that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Church, be not deceived. Fornicators. No person to see me. Let me just do one. My husband is not around. Let us come and do it. My wife is not around. Let us come and do it. Ah, I am a single. Let us come and do it. A day will come. You will regret and cry for those things if you don't repent now. The Bible says, the mighty man shall cry in pain. We cry out. All the things you think you are enjoying now are just but five minutes. But what about the consequence that follows after? What about the eternal termination you are causing to your own spirits? The spirit of God inside you that was supposed to make you a God on the earth. You have corrupted it because of your desire for five minutes. Hello, sir. You have corrupted the inner man, the power of God inside you because of your pleasure. Now, repent. Repent. The time is short. Neither fornicators, no idolaters. Who are idolaters? Not only those that are going to serve or juju are idolaters. Anything that takes the glory of God, it could be full. Anything that stands in your way from giving glory to God at the right moment has become your God. It could be your home, it could be your job, it could be your money, it could be your children. Anything that turns against the way of God in your life has become an idol to you. Repent. The Bible says, idolaters, adulterers, married women, fornicating. Married men, fornicating. The kingdom of God is not for you. Why? You have corrupt. The garment you are wearing. You have corrupt the garment he gave to you. You have corrupted the inner man. You cannot go there. It is not for the 30 people. We remember the parable of Jesus. Yes, sir. In a marriage, when he says, Go and invite people because the guests that were invited fail to come. So go into the street and invite anyone you see. But among those that were invited, the Bible says there was one without a garment for the ceremony and he was sent to be cast out into the outer darkness where he shall be weeping and gnashing of his teeth. Why? He was not ready, even though he was in the church, but yet pretending to be a Christian. Repent. Repent. The Bible says, adulterers, effeminate desires for wrong things, abusers of themselves with mankind. We see what is going on. That gay has become a normal thing. Man with mankind. Man, a kind of you, you go into a man. Oh, this is what, what happened in the Bible in the days of Lord that God has to send the spirit of blindness upon all the evil generation and he destroyed them with fire. In the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, repent. If you don't want to go to eternal fire where there is no coming back, repent. You still have the chance now. Don't allow your five minutes madness drive you to lose eternal peace. Don't allow these things of you are going to leave behind. The strategy of where you are to find peace. Let's ask Lazarus, a poor man, whether he's having peace now with Abraham. 
Let's ask the rich man who tried to get the old world and subdue others. Where is he now? This is what Jesus was saying, not me. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. I please show you the word of Jesus and not my word. The Bible says, heaven is not meant for thieves in verse 10. Not thieves. If you steal by any means, you are a thief. Yes, sir. Whether you use gun, you don't use gun. You use lying leaves. You mistakenly add one zero to it. You are a thief. Heaven is not meant for you. The Bible says, I have said you have robbed me. And the people ask, where have you robbed you? He said, in tithe and in offering. You are a thief if you are not doing the right thing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In Malachi, did he say so? Yes, sir. He said, I have said that you have robbed me. And the people ask, where have we robbed you? And God says, in tithe and in offering. So if you know what is good to do, you don't do it. You are what? A thief. And the Bible says a thief cannot enter the kingdom of God. Not thieves, not covetous. Ah, you desire anything where person wear. The moment you see that star, I want to show that star. You see that is wash. I like that is wash. You no longer have your own image, not your dignity. You want to look like a camelon. You see black, you black. You see green, you green. You see yellow, you yellow. You see white, you white. You don't even have your own arm. Ah. Convertious. Desire it is. You have become unstable. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The kingdom of God is not for such people. Drunkards. They give you know, God not bless you. They eat for table. No. By the time you become an habit, it denies you from giving glory to God. It's a sin. Right on, sir. Tell us. Anything sir. you do that is excess is a sin. Tell us, sir. Do you know even this water you take now? This water is it life? It can give you life. Yes, is it truth? Yes, sir. By the time you take it, SS, it can kill you. This same water you see now is meant to give you life. Yes, Taking it, SS, will destroy you. That is why people are drowned in the sea, in the water, in the rivers. Why? Because SS of it drowned them. Anything you do, excess that stops God from flowing in you, it becomes a sin, and therefore you have been cut off from God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Drunkards, you drink, you forget yourself. This something happened about Lot. That when Lot was saved, his wife became a pillar of salt. So they located a new ground, a new land. So the children of Lot, the two daughters, they have no wife, they have no husband, nothing. What they have to do? They have to give Lot excess drink. And when they gave him drink, he, he forgot himself and went in with their father and gave birth to children. The Ammonites and the Moabites. They gave birth to wicked generations of their own father. Because drink, essence of it can poison you, can make you lose control, can make you lose your name, your dignity, your power. Look at people we see in our country where we come from. They drink and enter gutter and fall into dishes. Why? The power of that drink. Listen, the devil understands that this thing you like is what I will use against you. The devil penetrated into the drink that you like and he gave you the habit of drinking and he become a drunkard. You are not struggling now. Smoking, you are not struggling now. Repent from it. Rivellas, you do me, I must do you back. And you forget, ah, I don't care with you. Even if not 20 years, I must pay you back. The Bible says the kingdom of God is not for you. Change. Jesus says, if any man slap you, give him the other side of your cheek. Let them slap you. If any man ask for your clothes, give him your own cloak. Give him your wardrobe to carry. To make sure you have peace at that moment. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. But that is where we want to defend ourselves. Extortioners. Give me, give me. Put it in my hand. I don't want people to know it. Give me. Give me, okay. And you, you, God says you are not going to heaven. Heaven is not meant for you. Let us weigh our life with these things. How many of us is going to make this heaven if you are not living right with this scripture? 
If there is any one of these things in you, start fighting it from today. Say, Lord, give me grace to come out. I repent from it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Adulterous. Extortioners. He said, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It is the Bible, not me. I would have loved to go on. It's one o'clock. The Bible says, anyone with this character, with this character, with this attitude, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Why? Your garment is stained. No one wants to see the syndicate with the dirty garments. No, sir. For example, tomorrow you have appointment in the Montesivano commune. The, the syndicate invites you. Will you go with a shirt full of oil? Be very truthful. No, sir. Be very truthful now. Church, I need the old church to respond. Why? We don't want to be denied of the favor that we come after. If we can honor common man that is like you, that God put a measure of bread in him and in you, then what about God? Who on that last day will see your garment and say, get behind me. I don't know you. You walk out of iniquity. Let us repent. If there is anything in you that is in that the glory of God, let us be on our feet. And begin to cry to God. Father, is there anything in me that is hindering your glory? Is there anything seen in me that will make me not to inherit your kingdom? Lord Jesus, remove it from me. Show me mercy as I repent now. Forgive me. I confess every sin, knowing and unknown sins, every intentional sins. Father, I confess them. Open your mouth and begin to ask God for mercy. Ask God for mercy. I repent of my sins. Open your mouth. Begin to repent. Begin.